Good day everyone, I am Alicia Sankupan. So for today's video, we are going to talk about reproductive system. If you want to know more about reproductive system, just focus on this video. Let me give you the objective of reproductive system. Reproductive system. When we say reproductive system, in both the male and female consists of primary and secondary sex organs and sex glands. The primary function of the reproductive system is to perpetuate the species through sexual or germ cell fertilization and reproduction. We have male and female reproductive system. So first, male reproductive system. It consists of a number of sex organs that play a role in the process of human reproduction. These organs are located on the outside of the body. Here's the parts of the male reproductive system. Penis, scrotum, testicles, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory ducts, urethra, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, bulbouretral gland. Penis. This is the male organ used in sexual intercourse. The glands also called the head of the penis is covered with a loose layer of skin called fold skin. This skin is sometimes removed in a procedure called circumcision. The opening of the urethra, the tube that transfers semen and urine, is a tip of the penis. The glands of the penis also contains a number of sensitive nerves ending. Scrotum. This is the loose pouch-like sac of skin that hangs behind and below the penis. It contains the testicles also called testes as well as many nerves and blood vessels. For normal sperm development, the testes must be at temperature slightly cooler than body temperature. Testicles Most men have two testes and the testicles produce testosterone and make sperm. They are two oval-shaped organs located inside the scrotum. Within the testes are coiled masses of tubes called seminiferous tubeless. These tubes are responsible for producing sperm cell. Epididymis. This part is the internal organs of the male reproductive system, also called accessory organs. The epididymis is a long coiled tube on the back side of each testicles. It also is the job of the epididymis to bring the sperm to maturity since the sperm that emerge from the testes are immature and incapable of fertilization. During sexual arousal, contraction force the sperm into the vas deferens. Vas deferens. The vas deferens is a long muscular tube that travels from the epididymis into the pelvic cavity just behind the bladder. The vas deferens transports mature sperm to the urethra, the tube that carries urine or sperm to outside of the body in preparation for ejaculation. Ejaculatory ducts. These are formed by the fusion of the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles. The ejaculatory ducts empty into the urethra. Urethra. The urethra is the tube that carries urine from the bladder to outside of the body. In males, it has the additional function of ejaculating semen when the man reaches orgasm. When the penis is erect during sex, the flow of urine is blocked from the urethra, allowing only semen to be ejaculated at orgasm. Seminal vesicles The seminal vesicles are sac like pouches that attach to the vas deferens near the base of the bladder. The seminal vesicles produce a sugar-rich fluid fructose that provides sperm with a source of energy to help them move. The fluid of the seminal vesicles make, makes up most of the volume of a man's ejaculatory fluid or ejaculate. Prostate gland The prostate gland is the walnut-sized structure that is located below the urinary bladder in front of the rectum. The prostate gland contributes additional fluid to the ejaculate. Prostate fluid also helps to nourish the sperm. The urethra, which carries the ejaculate to be expelled during orgasm, runs 
through the center of the prostate gland. And the last, bulboretral glands. Also called Cooper's gland, these are fee-sized structures located on the side of the urethra, just below the prostate gland. These glands produce a clear slippery fluid that empties directly into the urethra. This fluid serves to lubricate the urethra and to neutralize any acidity that may be present due to residual drugs of urine in the urethra. Hello guys, Mary Fort is about parts of the female reproductive organs. They have uterus, fallopian tube, and ovaries. The uterus is hollow, pure safe organ that is the home to a developing fetus. The uterus is divided into two parts, the cervix, which is the lower part that often into the vagina and the main body of the uterus called the corpus. The corpus can easily expand to hold a developing baby. A channel through the cervix allows sperm to enter and menstrual blood to exit. The uterus has three functions. Number one, the endometrium saves the lining of the uterus every 21 to 40 days by menstruation. Number two, it provides a place for the protection and nourishment of the fetus during pregnancy. Number three, it contracts during labor to expel the fetus. Palofian tube. The palopian tube is 4 to 6 inches long. The egg released from the ovary is captured by the fibria and brought into the fallopian tube. The egg is moved along inside the tube by muscular construction and the waving action of cilia. It takes an egg about 3 to 4 days to travel the length of the tube. If an egg is fertilized, it occurs here. As you can see the picture, future pictures, the tube widens to to, fro, to form the, the the ampulla. And the isthmus is the portion that connects to uterus. And the fimbria are the finger-like projections around the opening that trap the egg as it leaves the ovary. Opening is called the ostium. And the end of tube is called the infundibulum. Ovaries. The two ovaries are attached to each side of the uterus by a ligament. They are oval safe, about the size of large alive alive and lie close to the fimbria at the end of the fallopian tube. Each ovary is filled already at birth with egg containing such cold follicle. Each egg is called an ovum. Once every 21 days, one follicle in one ovary ripes. This mature follicle is a graphene follicle. The follicle ruptured in response to hormones from the pituit pituitary gland, releasing the ovum, egg, a process called ovulation. After the follicle rupture, it becomes a mass of yellow cells called the corpus luteum. This is a temporary progression producing structure. Vagina The vagina is a muscular tunnel line with nerves and mucous membranes. It connects the uterus and cervix to the outside of the body, allowing for menstruation, intercourse, and childbirth. Vulva Vulva is a five organs making up the external genitalia of the female. Mons pubis The mons pubis is an area of fatty tissue that covers the pubic bone in both males and females. Though it tends to be more prominent in female, it plays an important role in secreting pheromones 
responsible for sexual attraction. Lady Majora are prominent pair of cutaneous skin folds that will form the literal longitudinal borders of vulva clefts. The labia majora from the folds that cover the labia minora, clitoris, vulva vestibule, vestibular bulbs, Bartolin's glands, skin's glands, urethra, and the vaginal opening. Labia minora. The labia minora is defined as the smaller lips. The labia minora are a pair of small cutaneous folds that begins at the clitoris and extend downward. The anterior folds of the labia minora encircle the clitoris forming the clitoral hood and the freno frenulum of the clitoris. Vestibule. The vestibule is the inner portion of the vulva extending from heart's line to the labia minora inward to the hymenal ring. Within the vestibule are located the urethral meats and openings of skins and bardins glands. Clitoris. The clitoris is sensitive fold of tissue partially covered by hood. The perineum is the area located between the vaginal opening and the anus. It is a muscular sheet that can be torn during childbirth. Breast. The breast is the tissue overlying the chest muscles. Women breasts are made of specialized tissue that produce milk, granular tissue, as well as fatty tissue. The amount of fat determines the size of the breast. The milk-producing part of the breast is organized into 15 to 20 seconds called lobs.